Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the exciting AMA session featuring Etherland Project, hosted by La Token VCTV. I am delighted to be your guide through the engaging discussion today. Today, we have a very exciting guest, Mr. Alexis Brand, CEO of Etherland Project, and we are excited to have the opportunity to ask some important questions about the projects. So let's not waste time and let's welcome Mr. Alexis Brand. Hello, everyone. I'm really glad to be here, and I'm really glad to be able to answer all of your questions. Um, actually, I was able to, to read some of your questions uh, you submitted during the giveaway, and they are very interesting. And I'm glad uh, so many of you are showing uh, this much interest to our project. So I'm glad to be there today to be answering them. Exactly. So perfect. Let's move on to your questions directly, Alex. So my first question is, you know, what inspired the creation of Elan Token, and what are the main goals? Yeah, so, I mean, the Elan token is itself, um, how can I say, it's a, um, a repercussion of the Italian project. So our first uh, goal was to to build a platform um, for everyone to be using, you know, uh, real estate in a new uh, re revolutionary way and uh, change the way people own their data ready to real estate and how everything, you know, works. And of course, this platform uh, we came across specific use cases like um, the need to have different types of privacy for the data. So you have data that can be public, you have data that needs to be uh, private, semi-private, etc. And uh, in, for example, I'll give an example, in, in the uh, purchase process uh, of, a, of a real estate property, uh, maybe a buyer needs to access some documents. And to access these documents, you know, uh, you can maybe purchase or pay, you know, some, some, some fine, some fee, etc. And to do so, as everything is embedded deeply in our tech technology and there are lots of interactions, uh, our um, need was to, to create a utility token uh, and also to be able to reward users and also a very important point um, that I believe we will be addressing later, which is incentivizing people um, because this is a very complicated space we're in and we need to, 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 you know, to, to, to provide rewards and incentives for people to, to understand the technology and try uh, and trade for themselves. Exactly. That's you know that's a perfect out of the ball. So so that brings us <laughs> to the next question. Then so how does Etherland token you know reward system works and how is benefit to holders? Yes, exactly. Um, so the reward system, like I said, um, so we are in a very specific place. Uh, we first tried to to go retail and you know. Uh, uh, to to address to everyone and that's why for a very um, i mean long time i guess for one year we had a registration form uh, open on our website and we had some different campaigns like uh, 50 uh, free uh, nft registrations and uh, even having a very comprehensive uh, registration form and instructions for everyone so everyone could understand the benefits you know of uh, registering their properties uh, uh, on the blockchain the, all their documents etc uh, people had a lack, you know, of understanding of how critical certain information were, uh, how they needed to, you know, to do proper research as for the pictures, the text content, etc. And we understood that uh, the only way to be able to to make people understand was to create a, um, a reward system and an interesting one. And so that's when we came across the bounty program that you can read more about the, uh, on our roadmap article, by the way, and on, on our Medium page. Uh, which the, the idea is um, you have people that will own real estate properties uh, like their house or maybe, you know, NFT collections like monuments, etc. And um, what's available on the internet for, you know, monuments, etc. It's pretty scarce. So you, you don't have really much, you know, quality pictures. Sometimes you lack text information because, you know, it's like old, uh, let's say, an old Indian monuments, for example, you know, you only have information in specific books, in specific libraries, you know. You can't have this information on the internet. So the idea is uh, anyone can uh, post, you know, a job on, a, on the bounty board uh, that we will have on our website and say, okay, so for, for this NFT I own, for this property, I need a new text. Or I need new images. I need new video. And some, you know, professional, for instance, if we take a video, uh, let's say a, a video professional that owns a drone and, and those drone footage, he can take that job, you know, 
and go to the place, make a, a cool drone footage, and then he will be rewarded in Elan tokens against you know uh, uh, him delivering the product, the, the drone footage as uh, as promised, and that's. Um, that's, I believe, one of the, the most creative and interesting ways people will be able to interact. Uh, and it will also come in, in great combination with our mobile app at some point, where people will be literally, literally able you know, to, to go on the website and uh, see all the jobs they can, they can take, uh, undertake them you know, for, uh, for, um, for later. And then they, they go uh, um, with their car to, to destination SRI and, and on their phone, they can track uh, what they have to do, where it is, etc., and maybe on the spot see other, uh, you know, jobs in the in their area that they could have, uh, you know, taken and take them on the spot, you know. So that's a very interesting way uh, we have figured, and I, I believe it will be greatly greatly received as um, our mobile app was already pretty successful, uh, in uh, even though it was pretty simple. And I believe this will be a great asset. Yeah. That's a creative way, you know, Len. That was a creative way. All those, all those community to us, you know, who are looking for the creative way to jump onto the project and show some engagement. And that brings down to the question number three, Len. So, can you provide me the example of how Etherland platform can be used to interact with decentralized data and guarantee traceability in real estate transactions? Yes. So, um, as as for you know, this is more a technological question. So. Uh, decentralized data uh, is itself uh, provided by uh, our, our IPFS technology. And then I believe you said something about the privacy of data, etc. Uh, that's something we can less talk about because, that's for, for instance, we have a, a patent going about this part. But let's say that it's a privacy method built, built uh, on top of uh, uh, the, the decentralization uh, IPFS offers. And uh, also we have an arbitration of, uh, uh, what, uh, what can I say? decrypted access to this data. So yeah, so I'll take an exam uh, the example I, I said in the first question. Uh, if you have a, a property and you have different levels of um, privacy, you have like the, the public documents, semi-public that could be you know, disclosed if you want to sell your, your house, uh, and the fully private uh, documents such as you know, uh, um, uh, renovation work invoices, and you know, maybe you know, uh, plans and stuff, very, very precise uh, stuff. Um, and and so to to enable specific persons to access this data because if you take a property just a house you can access the data but also can the notary also can the government etc cetera, etc cetera. and so if every you know piece of data is encrypted you have to access it and dictate who accesses it and so we do we do that by creating uh, virtually uh, identities on the blockchain. Uh, for every actor that needs to access this data, and then we have our own infrastructure that, uh, on itself, you know, determines uh, okay, this person is uh, um, authenticated to access this private data. We can decrypt it for him, and he can access it, etc. And the, the the magic of all that is that all this is available, being decentralized and immutable. That's what that's what is very new in what we are bringing is that. Um, uh, at some point, you know, we 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 were okay. That's great. Uh, IPFS allows us to have public data decentralized. That's excellent. But it's public. Everyone can see it. And now there is a game changer, and we are about to 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 disclose it pretty pretty soon in a few months. So stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> exactly community so stay tuned you know but this is the most asked question you know so this is my one of my favorite question also so can you tell me some insight about you know Alliance token roadmap and its upcoming developments yes sure and um, I will also go into specific details a bit later um, but um, like I said our roadmap if you want to if you're a bit curious uh, it's in details uh, on our uh, medium uh, we have an article about that, but the, the greatest points I'm the most excited about, well, the first big ones, of course, are the, the finalization uh, of our infrastructure, uh, because uh, we have been spending a long time, and me, me especially, uh, conceptualizing and you know researching everything, etc. And uh, so now we are we are just waiting you know, to get uh, started with the developer team, and uh, that's a very good point. Uh, also, the Bounty program, like I said. Uh, myself, I'm very excited to see how, how well it will be received, and I believe it will be a great, uh, a great turning point. And also, a personal favorite uh, is the um, the mapping infrastructure because we are, we we have many talents in these areas, and we have also a, a, um, a foot set in architecture and all this stuff. And we believe, you know, um, 
the way we want to maybe transform at some point the cadaster and 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 you know the the mapping experience uh, could be not only very insightful and interesting for uh, uh, you know end users retail users uh, but will also be very interesting for some governments uh, because we we have been you know in south uh, east asia for the uh, earlier this year uh, to do some you know market research over there and um, we 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 realized uh, in this in these countries you know there are very little cadastres or, or you know digitalized uh, infrastructure overall so except maybe in china uh, where they have like cadastres uh, thousand years old uh, but for instance in, in indonesia philippines etc it's not there yet and it will be also part of why we we build this cadaster for for you know smaller countries and or countries that are not developed yet in this area to be using it and that's a personal favorite of mine yeah that's great that's great so i mean how does etherlang you know ensure the privacy of users like real estate information while maintaining transparency and you know traceability how does that yeah like i said um that's that's a, a, um a to be patented uh, area so i can't disclose much about it but what what i can say is, is that all of this technology uh, is using uh, top notch uh, symmetric uh, encryption systems uh, which are all uh, quantum proof and we have a bit if you if you want to know the specifics um um on the um, one of the last slides of our market uh, of our market deck excuse me um we have um uh, we detailed a bit what technologies uh, we use and uh, if you want to check these are also the technologies used by the go uh, the american government uh you know to be able to 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 how can i say to keep them uh, their information private from you know quantum computers uh, future attacks and that's a very interesting topic also <laughs> <laughs> all right so community now it's your time you know uh, alexis is going to answer your questions so from the giveaways to the users so i'll present the first question so i buy a pantone as an nft and can i walk inside the virtual building and, and yeah, that's also uh, um, one of the last points uh, of our world map, which is uh, uh, very interesting. Also, um, we we like like you have maybe seen it. In, it's maybe why you ask this question. We have a whole collection which is called, which is which is called excuse me the lost words. Um, the concept was uh, a lot of uh, monuments disappeared over time, you know, um, due to uh, environmental issues or maybe just aging of the materials also because some of them were, were built like uh, three thousand, four thousand years ago um and um we, we we were like okay it's, it would be pretty cool to to bring them back to life and as i said we have a, a very skilled team of architects and designers and uh, our lead architect uh, made you know sketches uh, of, well he did not make sketches he made 3d models from sketches uh, yeah because you know for these monuments you don't even have plans because some architects you know they use plans for dimensions and they can build walls uh, in 3d uh, of a 2d plan uh, but uh, our lead architect, he made actually the, the same work, but with sketches and drawings, and um, and the result was pretty great. And we, we were like, we have all these monuments in 3D, uh, and, and at some point, it would be very interesting to be able to explore them. And um, there is something I can tease about it, but um, our lead architect was very uh, keen on learning, you know, Unreal Engine technology, and the latest Unreal Engine, so the one you've seen with, with the pretty graphics, you know, the stunning graphics, is the one he's working on and um we actually have some in some some will in the future to make what we call a cultural metaverse which will be basically a big museum you could explore in vr or maybe just with your computer you know with your screen it would be good enough i believe and you could walk inside those monuments and explore them as you would you know in a video game for instance and that's the idea because it will be basically uh, built like a video game on unreal engine um and it will be a very interesting work of ours because you know our greatest asset is is to be working with our architects and um if you are in the gaming space and you've maybe heard about a game which is called star citizen at some point uh, it's a game where you can see oh you know critical having uh, architects in game design and you know world building is because architects know uh, the importance of lighting uh, the importance of how a space is is supposed to be laid out and when you combine the architect's knowledge with historians' knowledge and you know how practices were in time, etc. We will be able to recreate you know spaces inside inside those buildings like they were before, and with with you know very um, realistic lighting, etc. And it's a very interesting thing. And so yeah, we'll be able to walk inside it, but even more, you know, 
because not only you will be able to walk and, and feel like you were a citizen back in the day, but we will also feature, you know, historical uh, elements and, you know, lore and etc. So like a visit at the museum, basically, you will be able to learn and be stunned. <laughs> Exactly, community. So, you know, stay tuned with this project, you know, because Alexi is going to, you know, bring out some magic behind on those lead architects are working on the great things. You're going to see some great improvements to be up. So that brings down to the next question. So what is the biggest purpose for facilitating encrypted transactions? Yes. So, uh, like I said earlier, um, our, um, our, uh, in our case, it's, it's, it's not encrypting transactions, it's encrypting folders and data. Um, and it's uh, and it's useful, like I said, to decentralization because um, we have to arbitrate, you know, which which folder is private, to which to, to which person it's supposed to be accessed, etc. And um, and the most important feature of of, of all this is that it's quantum proof. So it means it's also future proof at some to some extent, of course, because we don't know, you know, how powerful uh, com com quantum computers will come to be, maybe in 20, 30 years. But for now, it's a very it's a very important thing and. And of course, it's important because, especially in this field, uh, if we don't uh, encrypt data, we can't go any further, you know. Because the main uh, critical, you know, uh, what can I say, concerning aspect of real estate is the lack of transparency and accessibility of its data. But of course, if you can only have uh, public data decentralized on IPFS and you know made immutable and uh, and secured, uh, you you can only solve you know a third of the problem. So. Yeah, that's why we 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 had you know encryption being such a, a, a critical aspect of our project. Absolutely. So, like, what challenges have you incurred in the past with the projects, and how can you use the experience to advantage at that time? Yeah. So, <laughs> once again, I I, I I spoiled a bit the answer in the previous answers you you first the previous question you first asked me, but uh, we we learned a lot from like I said being retail. Uh, because, uh, as I said, in this specific field, we have specific challenges. But I'm going to address uh, another one um, in a different angle. So uh, the reason why, you know, most people also did not understand uh, our registration form very well and, and oh, they needed to, to, to put in very detailed information because it's very abstract for them. You know, of course, uh, in the distant future where everything is digitalized, and you know all the, the the real estate data are on chain and easily accessible. That means when you will buy a house. Uh, currently, you know, I know in my entourage, you know, people are are, are charging homes, you know, and it takes <laughs> even if you find if you find a home right now, and even if in a country like France, uh, where you know there is a lot of data already available, you know, in notary offices, not everything is like. Um, out of the place, there are there are quite a lot of data available. But even in this country, it can take between three and six months to complete a transaction after you you decided to buy the house and you, you signed you know the promise of uh, of purchase. And um, and and uh, in the future, when, when everything will be digitalized, this process will take like maybe one month max. You know, uh, between between a few weeks to to one month. And of course, uh, in the you know in your daily life, it will make a lot of changes. It will be critical for you because you will you will lose a, a lot um, less time. Uh, yes. But how many times do one do one person you know go through the the, the the process of purchasing a home in his lifetime? Only you know once or twice. So it's not it's not that pertinent for everyone. And that's why you know it's a very critical place because it's the kind of technology that will better everyone's future. And everyone's, you know, um, usability of of uh, of the of the space, but it's not that critical for everyone uh, to be understanding it. And so, and so that's why we have understood a lot from it, and that's why we we also put the Bounty program up, and we are also focusing right now on B two B, and that's something I will explain later. But uh, by by focusing on B two B and and tokenizing a lot of properties from big professional actors will ensure that down the line, you know, everyone will have a, 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 a great examples to understand it and even maybe don't, will not have the choice and uh, their house will be uh, already digitalized uh, on its own. Um, and the last point, which, is, which will be quicker, uh, is the, the lack of uh, partnerships also. Uh, because um, in the past, we were, we were most mostly centered on ourselves. And I keep saying the past, but Keep in mind, we first released uh, Etherland in 2020, 
So we have already quite a leeway of, you know, experience and, you know, and that's why I, I meant that because we were pretty centered on, on, on ourselves and uh, on our community and doing our things. And now we have completely reversed that dynamic and we have, uh, in fact, at, we, at the opposite, we have put in place a partnership program. Uh, so I can't tell you more about it, but just to say that we have very uh, interesting, you know, partnership dynamics between us and our partners. Uh, that will uh, enable us to have a lot of partners. And I can already tell you that we have a lot of things cooking. And uh, that's a great point we have already covered uh, in terms of, you know, uh, taking experience from our past mistakes. I can I can assure you that right now we have completely inverse the tendency. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, what are the, you know, most important and immediate goals for the ELAN projects in 2023? So, if you had any, you know, list of top three key performance metrics, oh, yeah. what, I what would there be? I have totally, and um, the first one, it's not its not really on our roadmap, but we'll be learning a lot about it okay. uh, in the coming uh, weeks because we have planned to, to be uh, disclosing quite a bit about it during the Web3 Berlin, which is a conference we are being uh, attending in uh, two weeks, um, which is the crowdfunding campaign. Um, in fact, we, and it's close to the second point, the second point being the, the the fact of building our uh, infrastructure and um, MVP. And uh, the reason is we it will cost a lot of money, uh, not mm-hmm. trim and summons, of course, but it will cost some money. And for this purpose, we want to to, to launch a, uh, a crowdfunding campaign, which will be pretty interesting. Uh, you will see we, you will have pretty um, interesting rewards and type of things people will be able to get in exchange, you know, of uh, investing in our crowdfunding campaign. So that, that was the first. Like I said, the second was, was the infrastructure, uh, all the, um, the construction, which is uh, partially uh, done. Like we are maybe at one fourth uh, of, of it being completed. Uh, and the third uh, is um, converting uh, our pre-agreed uh, uh, clients uh, into you know real customers and uh, able to use our products uh, of product and infrastructure as our first customers because. As of now, we have already discussed with a lot of you know professionals, and a lot of them are interested in our solution. But we have we don't have a product yet because we have to build our infrastructure. And so, yeah, for 2023, I think those are the three key elements that we will be able to hopefully uh, unfold and get and get on with. Um, and yeah, that's it. That's about it. And what are the like long-term sustainable value drivers for the Elan token, Alexis? Yeah, so that's a pretty uh, that's a term we have to be careful with because, um, uh, like, I will give you a, an example to to get us. So it's not really such an, a sustainable value driver, but uh, our token being a utility token, it means it's integration in every aspect of our ecosystem, uh, in some in in some way. Um, come, uh, how can I say? Will uh, um, assure that some people will be using the token. So. We have a lot of things, like I said, we have the bounties, we have the, uh, a great subscription, so a subscription to be able to see, you know, the grades, we have a grading system, uh, rating the properties, you know, uh, like an architect review, investor review, etc. cetera. Uh, we have uh, one-time purchases, like I told you earlier, like if you want to access uh, private documents uh, from someone that wants to sell their house, you, you will be able to do that with like a one-time payment, like you, you, you can pay like, uh, I don't know, uh, free, uh, free, free, and ready land, and you can access, you know, uh, the document, uh, and also bounty etc. Like I said, uh, and yes. um, and also, and also, so like it's a utility token, you have, you have to keep in mind for you to to use our platform, uh, everyone will need ELAN token, and the success of our conversion of the real estate industry and all the actors I told you about, our clients, our partners, uh, it means more users for the Italian ecosystem and platform. And more users for the platform means more users for the token. So, of course, you know, these are all long term and conditional, uh, and, and we are not a security, we are a utility token. So, uh, you have to, to keep in mind that we, we do not make any real promise of value uh, from the token, uh, only the belief in the quality of uh, its usability to our platform is what guarantees its value. So, so, that's why I meant it's a pretty tricky question, but an interesting one, because um, just the, the sheer number of users we will get will uh, um, assure some kind of value, if you will. 
Exactly, Alexis. You know, our community is very tricky with this question. And, you know, they jump <laughs> and deep dive into the questions, you know. They read about yeah, your yeah, product. Yeah, I, I wanted to make it clear. So it was it was a great opportunity. <laughs> exactly. It could be the, you know, next tricky question. So like to increase the value of tokens, it, it is necessary to use certain amounts, you know. Uh, everyone call it a different buyback burning of tokens of some projects. And some call it even a black hole. So how mechanism do you use to increase the value of this token, man? Yeah, so like I just said, we cannot dictate the value of a utility token the same, uh, but we do have plans to do some kind of operations that can fall into what you consider these operations uh, because we have some plans to buy uh, back tokens um, and, and actually it will be integrated in our you know, budget spending uh, and tokenomics for the crowdfunding campaign. Uh, because, you know, uh, um, to be joining exchanges, uh, and to be also operating our platform um, and to do, you know, reward system. And I, I have something I've not yet talked about, which is the DAO. Uh, but um, our DAO uh, will be actually also, you know, used to do reward at some extent, etc. So we do have to, to, we do need to have, you know, a certain amount of tokens to be able to reward users, to join exchanges, to do giveaways, etc. And uh, it takes quite a lot of, of tokens and like like you can see we have burned nearly uh, 95 percent of our supply and um, it was a point i was going to address also as part of burning we are left with uh, 41 million tokens and okay. i don't think we will burn any more tokens yet i mean it's <laughs> it's already a pretty you know it's already a pretty uh, scarce uh, supply um so and, and yeah and that's that's the main reason why we, we will buy back tokens because we we, we want to do so and you will see anyways, we will, we will publish a document uh, uh, for our crowdfunding campaign and even later on, because uh, I think even uh, we will, um, you know, um, how can I say, have a percentage of the revenues of the company, of the benefits for to be precise, that will be used to purchase uh, tokens back here. That's great. Like, you know, many new projects, you know, make a good impression, but fairly, you know, suddenly gets abandoned. So my question is like, how will you manage the project and the token to get a position in the market and become the best token in the crypto world? Yeah, that's a very that's a very interesting point, and uh, and I <laughs> I will fire some shots over there. Um, sure, so sure, sure. first, f firstly, and that's a pretty you know uh, for your information point, uh, we cannot promise such things as the fantasy dream, if I can say so, of becoming the best ever token. You know, this is a bit of a nice nine statement. Um, that you should, and you should be highly skeptical of anyone making such claims in this space. Um, and this is also why we have been highly critical of, you know, other uh, RWA's uh, projects in the real estate, uh, precisely, uh, because their demeanor is highly misleading even for the users. Uh, they make everyone believe they will revolutionize real estate and, and be the biggest thing out there, you know, be the biggest project, transcend everything real estate wise, whereas they are only equipped to be just another agency competing against millions of other agencies. Um, that's something I, I will not really detail over there, but just look at the way they are, they are doing their thing. You know, they are not trying to, to be working with real estate professionals. They are trying to compete against real estate professionals. And believe me, I, I have been engaging with a lot of real estate professionals and none of them, you know, will want anything to do with them. And we have, um, some of the biggest actors in France, and France is one of the biggest countries uh, for real estate. Uh, it's a very tremendous industry, industry in this country. And the, the, the biggest actors, trust me, they already have a lot of tech teams working on everything they can, new technology-wise. Uh, and if, you know, if they need to put millions of uh, dollars down you know, to compete against these new digital agencies, trust me, they will. And, that's why that's why they will have a lot of uh, uh, time going on. And we, on the other hand, we have no interest in, in being a, con in co a concurrent, excuse me, of traditional actors and agencies. Uh, we already have great relationships, like I just said. Um, and the fact of being able to work with all of these professionals and providing them ext extremely useful tools they can actually use to better to better their work experience. That's, that's something that they will be able to use daily. You know, uh, when they work on construction sites, when they work. Uh, to, to visit uh, houses with clients, etc. Um, and we will be, of course, in time, uh, the biggest among all blockchain projects, real estate wise, just because of this factor, because we are not, you know, competing against every traditional actor, we are working with them. <laughs>
<laughs> impeccable words, Alexis. I mean, the, that was impeccable words when you said that, you know, you have a team that's going to, you know, put down a million dollars to, you know, to get this project yeah. to, a, to a very high extent. That's when, you know, yeah, uh, so you. I have a next question for my community. And this question has asked more than 100 people. So do you have any plans to attract non-crypto investors to join the project? Because the success of a project attracts more investors who aren't into the crypto world. So what are the plans oh, yeah. to raise those awareness for the project in a non-crypto space? Yeah, so like, like um, you might already have understood, uh, the fact that we are actively engaging with real estate professionals, it's already, it's already one of the greatest, you know, uh, non uh, non uh, crypto investors onboarding uh, routine we could have, you know, ever uh, wished for, um, because you have to think about the rippling effect, you know, the cascade effect uh, by enabling all major real estate firms to move, you know, on chain and decentralized. Uh, it, it will. They, they will, especially if they are, you know, asset managers and they hold a lot of, you know, properties, they will first tokenize all their properties. So the one they own because they invest in properties, you know. And then when it's done, you know, you have to keep in mind most of these firms, they are not only asset managers, they are also, you know, uh, retailers and they have retail clients. And once they have tokenized all their properties, they will start, you know, proposing this technology to retail customers. and. You know that's the best way you could you could uh, uh, onboard the most you know the largest part of the population because everyone owns real estate, everyone knows about real estate, um, and you know by ending them an extremely you know down to earth uh, example uh, they will get to use very often, which will be our technology and you know the the use of of data and access to data, they will already be exposed to blockchain uh, technology in the blockchain space and cryptocurrencies, you know, and you have to keep in mind that adoption is key to adopt a, 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 a culture. And it's like when you try to, to learn a new language, you know, uh, you can try to do this from the comfort of your home, you know, in your own country where everyone speaks your own language and it's harder. But if you go uh, uh, immerse yourself in the country where you're trying to learn the language for one month, two months, six months, trust me, the progress is going to be tremendous. And that's the same effect we are trying to, to have. Exactly, exactly, Alex. I'm impressed by your words, man. And that brings <laughs> down to the second last question. So like, what kind of schedule do you anticipate? How might your projects you know, evolve over the time? And what is, have you planned to manage out? Yeah, so uh, as I said earlier, our first goal, uh, our first goals are to develop our projects. Um, Following, you know, the conversion of all the major real estate uh, players, asset manager, uh, their possessions, etc. Uh, then the, the next big milestones will be the onboarding of retail customers. Um, and after that, what's done? The only thing left. Well, the only thing left, uh, left, excuse me, is government infrastructure and you know, uh, either integration to their own infrastructure or you know, just complete usage of our own. Um, and um, that's um, what can I say? That's an example I, I gave, you know, like with small countries uh, or maybe island countries, you know, not having any uh, cadaster. Uh, and that's, you know, the, I'd say the, the biggest, you know, milestone we will be able to reach. And that's when we will truly be what we can call global. And yeah, the major risk to anticipate and avoid while going global at a such a scale, you know, it's submitting to exterior influences and, you know, pressures from powerful actors. Uh, because we must remain true to our goal and vision and and live solely uh, through that perspective, yeah. Exactly. So, Alex, uh, this brings down to the last question of the community. So what is the most am ambiguous goal of the project and what is the ultimate vision for your project which trying to achieve with the cryptocurrency market? Yeah, and it's deeply linked to what I just said to, to conclude the last question. Uh, our most ambitious goal and vision, it's, it, it's uh, intimely shared and deeply linked with uh, thus of the whole blockchain industry. Uh, we want to put the power over everything you know, people own and what rhythms their life back into their own hands. You know, in a world uh, in which we live that is set to be fully digital, where everything could be used against you by anyone, you have to ensure complete and control uh, controlled, excuse me, ownership over everything that concerns you. This way, you know, and only this way, will mankind finally be able to set free of its shackles, you know, and move forward to a brighter future and, a, and not a brighter, more, more especially a fairer future. Because currently, you know, it's not that fair. You can, uh, you could argue. <laughs> exactly, Alexis. I mean, 
that was a pleasure talking to you you know pleasure chatting to you our community asked um, among the great questions to you do you have alexis you know to share anything to our community yeah i mean thanks a lot guys uh, once again for uh, you know giving me the opportunity to answer all these questions uh, i think there are lots of points i have not addressed at any time uh, ever you know and um, hopefully it will give you new perspectives of you know how we we see you know uh, this space or we see the world and what we what place we are willing to have inside this world and you know my conclusion and the last the last point was kind of portraying that um, we we are deeply you know concerned by everything going you know in this world and we we are deeply you know uh, moved and willing uh, to be working for the people and with the people and I, I, and we truly believe that it's you guys uh, and every one of us you know that will make uh, the, the truly the greatest changes and that's why we have to we have to 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 create solutions for everyone you know to be able to unite and work together uh, to transform you know tomorrow all right so community out there all the latokan community out there etherland is a project that has a vision etherland is a project that has some magic to be out to become so you know just stay tuned with the etherland stay tuned and make this the next success story of this latokan thank you for joining yeah. alex it was a pleasure talking to you see you soon May, me too me too mate cheers <laughs> exactly